Hey podcast peeps, I'm Sister Keela and you are tuned into The Door. We're talking all things healing, beautiful, and light, and that means you. So get ready to be inspired, walk through the door, and remember who and what you are. Good morning, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Today I'm going to talk about an issue that hinders some of my coaching clients and that is the issue of judgment. Judgment is the opposite of allowing. Um, Allowing is a powerful concept because when you're allowing something you just let it be. So judgment is the opposite of allowance it's closely tied to control and control is like money it's neither good nor bad but it's the use or misuse or the obsession with it or the fear of it that can become detrimental to the person so judgment is closely tied with control not that it is controlling in itself but when we place judgments then an internal barometer becomes set on how much control we're going to exert over a person place or thing or how much control we deem we're going to allow something to have. So the issue with some of my clients of late has been judging. It's not been allowing. They judge things and people and places they encounter in life every day. Um, Most pervasive, we find that through discovery Um, that they also judge themselves. Does that sound familiar to you? Do you have an inner critic that's constantly judging others, judging yourself? One metaphysical truth is that separation is an illusion. So if you think you're aware that you are hard on yourself but not on others the truth is you're hard on us too (laughs) because there's no separation if you have an awareness that you judge others but find that you're perhaps smug or self-righteous and that you're actually better than them the truth is deep down you aren't as free or happy or joyful as you could be Because as you're judging others, that's right, you're actually judging yourself. As someone who used to judge everything, and I mean everything, as right or wrong, good, evil, and had formed a mental opinion of everything and everyone that I crossed along my path in a given day, I can tell you, It's very exhausting because when I put people in those piles of right, wrong, good, bad, I had to make a judgment associated with that. And in order to do that, I had to have an opinion about everything. And that gets old that gets exhausting and so I'm bringing forth this topic because as someone who used to be a chronic judger and in recent days some of my coaching clients have been encountering the same issue it just goes to show that it's very common with us humans and so we're gonna unpack some of it today and get you free So let's talk about how you can relinquish judgment. I love that word relinquish. 
so powerful. The definition means to voluntarily cease, to keep or claim or to give up. You're voluntarily ceasing to keep or claim something or to give it up. So quick, powerful truths and awarenesses and application to relinquish judgment. So for some of us, including some of my clients, they recognize, oh, I shouldn't judge. I shouldn't be so judgmental of myself. I shouldn't be so judgmental of others. But I'd like you to shift from the thought that you should not to you cannot. When we give up the exercise of judgment, we're merely giving up (laughs) what we did not have. And what do I mean by that? Right now, we think we have the right to judge and we shouldn't. But the reality is that we cannot judge. There is a metaphysical force. There is a source. There is a universe. There is a broader perspective, a consciousness. Some say Holy Spirit. Some say Allah. Some say source, some say universal, some say Buddha nature, Christ consciousness. There is one capital O that meets the conditions for judgment. And we're not it. So to start, you can let yourself off the hook by getting the broader perspective and just reframing your thought that, hmm, you know what, I shouldn't judge, to wait a minute, I cannot judge. And I'll talk about the conditions um, for being able to judge uh, in a moment. But that's number one. Shift from should not to cannot. Number two, when we recognize we cannot judge, we're merely becoming more honest. I want you to say this after me. The truth is, I cannot judge. Good. Say it after me one more time. The truth is, I cannot judge. Hmm. And think about, no, don't think, feel what it feels like that you're becoming more honest. I want you to feel how clean and light And good that feels, even that sentence. You know what? I'm becoming more honest. Feel that. Feel how much lighter you are. And even if it's only the size of your pinky, of your little fingernail, let that weight be lifted. I'm going to say that sentence again. You're becoming more honest. Now I want you to exhale. And I want you to breathe that truth in deeply. That you cannot judge. And you're becoming more honest. And I want you to let yourself expand inside. Feel yourself opening up wider because you're an honest being.
being. You're merely becoming more honest as you align with the truth. Isn't that delicious? So point number one was I wanted you to shift your schema from, oh, I should not to I cannot. But now I'm going to tell you why judgment in the usual sense is impossible. You literally cannot judge. (laughs) And I'm going to tell you why. So the reality is that in order to actually judge anything rightly, you'd have to be fully aware of an inconceivably wide range of things. You'd have to be aware of past, present, things to come. You'd have to recognize in advance all the effects that your judgments on everyone and everything involved in them in any way, how they'd be effective. You'd have to be certain that there's no distortion in your perception so that your judgment would be wholly fair and everyone in whom it rests now and in the future would be sure. Who's in a position to do this? Who except one who's operating in illusion or as in Course in Miracles says, grandiose fantasies could claim having that knowledge for him or herself. Exactly. We can't know past, present, or future. We can't have a perfect perception. We can't know and be wholly fair to everyone on whom our judgment rests now and in the future because we'd have to see and know and be all we'd have to have the aerial view the broader perspective and as you know we're human remember how many times you thought you knew all the facts you needed to judge a person place or thing or even yourself And how wrong you were. I think we've all had this experience. Think about a time you thought you had all the facts. But you didn't know the truth. There was a story. There were circumstances. There were causes and conditions for someone's behavior. Or your perception was off and you thought, ah. And then let me ask this. Would you even know how many times you merely thought you were right without realizing you were ever wrong? Because your judgment went unspoken. You were putting things in piles like I used to. People or places in piles. Judging them and never articulating your judgment, but you thought it, would you even begin to know how many times you thought you were right and were actually wrong? Why would you choose? Why would I choose? Why would anyone choose such an arbitrary basis for decision making? Decisions that aren't based in reality necessarily. But that our ego, which is based in illusion, gets to run the show. Wisdom is not judgment. True wisdom is the relinquishment of judgment. Because wisdom says, I don't meet the criteria in order to judge perfectly, in order to judge fairly. 
So let's recap. I want to go back over where we've been briefly so that we can get to the really good stuff. And I, I'm confident that some of you in the shifting of your perspective and the shifting of your mind, a miracle is already happening. You're already freeing, feeling freer. You've already decided to let someone be. You've already decided to take your mental hands off a situation that you've been judging and to just let it be so you can focus on being. So the first thing is we talked about shifting from, yeah, you know what, I shouldn't judge to, hmm, I actually can't judge. That's huge. The shift from should not to could not. Recognizing that when we give up the exercising, the exercise of judgment, we're merely becoming more honest. We're becoming aligned with the truth. And that shift to moving into being a more honest being, whoa, that feels so good. Don't you feel nourished by that? That feels so bright and so light and so beautiful. So I want you to allow yourself to experience that. I want you to drink that in deep. That is delicious. Next, I want to think about the conditions for what it takes to actually judge. And when we review that judgment in the usual sense is actually impossible because neither you nor I meet all the conditions in order to judge appropriately and perfectly, then we realize, ah, it's not my place. And then to reinforce that truth, we looked at all the times we thought we had it right. We thought we knew the facts, and I'm doing my fingers in quotes when I say facts. We thought we had all the facts and we were wrong. And then because we're human, I posed a question, could you even know how many times you thought you judged correctly and didn't? We don't even have a way of knowing how many times just in our own mind, in our own world, we thought we judged something rightly and we judged amiss because we don't have that universal consciousness. We don't have the view of past, present, future. We don't know how our judgment would impact every other thing that person, place, or thing is involved with. So there's no way you and I as humans can judge another human or even ourselves fairly. Yes, my dear brother, my dear sister, you are coming into self-awareness. You are unfolding, but none of us can know the doors, the chambers of our heart as intimately as the one who created those chambers. We're moving in that direction, but we'll never know ourselves perfectly. We'll never know the why behind some of the things we do, like judging ourselves or others. But the truth is, we're one. And so now, I'm going to give you an assignment. Not assignment to take away, but we're going to do it right now together. 
And that assignment is for you to make one final judgment. Mm -hmm. You're going to make one final judgment. And this judgment is you are going to judge the universe wholly fair. You are going to decide and judge. I'm going to use the word God for lack of a better term. You're going to judge rightly God. You're going to judge God as being the one completely qualified and you're going to judge the universe as one that meets all the conditions for infinite intelligence, knowledge of past, present, future, knowledge of how everyone, including you and I, are interconnected. The final judgment is this. Judge source as holy fair recognizing that there's no distortion in his perception and I use the pronoun his but we know that can be his her it and if you're agnostic you're definitely invited to this table because you more than anyone don't presume to know the infinites of God. And so even if you're like, whatever it is, whatever he is, whatever that is, that's bigger than all of us. I'm going to leave judgment to that thing that is bigger and more infinite than I. So if you're ready, just want you to breathe now. Come back to your breathing. Deeply in. And out. And I'm going to lead you in that. Some of you have already done it, but if you haven't, we're going to make that judgment. That there is one that is greater than you, that is greater than I, who meets all the necessary conditions to judge. And we're not it. So when I count to three, I'm going to snap. And when you hear the snap together, we are going to judge God rightly as perfect in perception and qualified to judge. And again, even if you don't believe in God, something, a higher power than yourself that's not you so you can be free. One, two, three. So now, my dear brother, my dear sister, you can let go. God, for lack of a better term, is beyond all forms. So the form you use will not offend the source of all. <laughs> you can't hurt love's feelings. 
So use the form or pronoun that feels good to you. And I'm just going to lead you in this intention. Just repeat after me. God, or fill in your blank, your blank with whatever pronoun feels right to you. Remember, you can't hurt source. You can't hurt love's feelings. <laughs> Move past the form and into that. That is all. So God, I let go. I'm going to let, and you fill in your name, I'm going to let Keela I'm going to let, that's right, say your name, B. I relinquish the right. I relinquish the illusion of judgment over myself and over people, places, and things. I'm going to let myself be. I'm going to let others be. I'm tired of having an opinion of everyone and everything. Your opinion is what matters. Thank you that I am merely becoming more honest Thank you for freedom to not care. Thank you for the gift of a light heart. I release others of my judgment. And I release myself. Amazing, my friend. You are amazing, my dear brother and my dear sister. You know, miracles don't have to take a long time. When we experience a shift in consciousness, a shift in our perception, a miracle can happen in an instant. So thank you for joining me. Be free as you go today. If you would like coaching sessions with me, um, I'm a holistic life coach. If you would like coaching, you can go to the link in the show. There you'll find my calendar with my availability for 60-minute sessions. Um, Now through January, everyone is getting the reduced rate of $75 per session. It's the end of the year. It's the holiday season. And so if you have an issue you want to work through or a goal that you'd like to achieve. Um, Now is the time to be able to meet with me at a reduced rate, and I'm happy to do that. And we can unpack whatever is important to you. And um, I will simply hold space for you and simply love you. Why? Because the truth is you are deeply loved and we are one. 
See you next time. All right, podcast peeps, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, this concludes this episode of The Door. Please subscribe so you can tune into the show twice a month. We air every other week. And if you would like to support the show, you can click on the link below in the program description. And if you would like to be on the show, you can click on the link, leave a voicemail with your name, contact information, and the topic you would like to discuss for the good of the listening audience that can be under the umbrella of healing, love, and light. I'd like to thank you again for tuning in and remind you that you are deeply loved and we are one. <laughs>